give Mary a round of applause. I'm doing my topic on organ transplantation. There has never been a need more greater than today to expand the education and the knowledge and informing and the information of people about organ donation. I will bring awareness to the shortage of organs and transplantations here in the United States. I will talk about the history of organ donation, the advantages of becoming a donor, and lastly, I would like to dispel some of the myths that many of you have in regards to organ donation. In the eight minutes that it takes for me to give my speech, somebody who is on the waiting list for organ donations will die. According to Ed Reed, the author of The Survival Guide to Public Speaking, you as an audience don't care. You only send, tend to listen to things that directly affect you. Organ donation is something that affects everybody in this room, and it has the ability to affect um, your loved ones and your family as well. Organ donation is not a new procedure. It is something that is being done around the world, across the United States, and here in the Coachella Valley. I can speak from my heart on this subject, having had first-hand experience in organ donation. My husband was 33 years old, and for unknown reasons, his heart stopped repeatedly as he lay in the hospital on life support, on a ventilator, I began starting to think, is my husband possibly going to be a donor recipient? And then later, my thoughts and concerns switched to, is he going to be an organ donor when he dies? My husband's story is one of success, because somebody did donate the gift of life and gave it in time that it made a difference for him. He is a true success story. Because of my experiences, because of my history in medicine, I have a real strong passion, and I care about people, and I care about preserving life. There's a need to educate people and expand the information that they have and, it's been, and their volume and their involvement. There's never been a greater need than now. And there's never been more medical and technological skills than we have today in our society. To begin with, I would like to tell you exactly what transplantation is. Transplantation is strict, simply the act of surgically taking an organ out of someone, one person, and placing it into another. This usually happens because the person's own heart has failed, their lungs due to Ill illness, injury, disease, and a lot of times it's our young people with trauma. Um, having somebody die and donate their gift is absolutely giving the most ultimate gift that somebody could give. It's giving the gift of life. There's two types of donation, living and deceased. In living donation, the person does not have to be dead, obviously. According to the American Journal of Transplantation, the organ comes from somebody that's alive and it accounts for 56% of our donations. Relatives are the best choice because they're a closer match, but you know what? Somewhere in the world, everybody's got that Somebody has it. We just have to find it. Organs that are donated include the kidneys, the liver, the lungs, um, the pancreas, and um, the pancreas. Um, the second type is don if, uh, donations when people have deceased, when they have passed on. And uh, they're either dead clinically or biologically. The hard part is, while this only accounts for 44% of transplants, only 1% of people really and truly die in such a way that their total bodies and their organs can all be utilized. However, giving the heart, the lungs, if you pass away, we can use bone, skin for our burn victims to the point where we now are doing a lot. We're even doing faces allowing somebody who didn't have a chance for a future to live some sort of a life of normalcy. With uh, organ donation isn't new to the world. Our first organ donation happened back in 1954 when, when twins, brothers, one donated his kidney to his other brother and that started a whole new thing. He ended up having a wonderful life. He got married. He had three children. 
He lived a nice, a nice full life. He had a life thanks to his brother. And this was in 1954. We also started, it opened up the door, it paved the path so that in 1968, we did our first, our first heart transplant. In 1998, we did our first hand transplant. And in 2010, we did our first face transplant. This brings me to the statistics. When we look at the statistics, they're staggering. Every person isn't somebody's relative, friend, brother, mother, child, maybe even somebody that's related to you. The statistics by the Oregon Procurement Transportation Network done in February of 2012 state that there are over 113,000 1,800 pe people that wait on a transplant list. That's more than would fit inside our nation's largest football stadium. These are all awaiting transplant. Out of all of these people who are awaiting transplant, 20,300 organs were donated, were transplanted last year. And out of those 2,100, they went to 10,550 people. 10% 10 of those were children. This leaves over 102,000 people still waiting for organ transplants. The number grows at an alarming rate of 300 every month. So our stadium just keeps filling up faster than we can empty it. Uh, every single solitary day, 18 people that are on the list will die waiting for their gift of life, waiting for an organ to come to them. One person's donation of eight can make a difference. One per, of eight organs, one person, eight organs, can save up to 50 lives. And it's not just hearts and lungs, it's the gift of sight through your cornea donations the gift of hearing through cochlear implants. With advanced science, so has come government and laws and initiatives, of course. The creation, the, um, the United States Department of Health created um, the national organization, UNOS, to work as far as the recovery goes and organizing our transplantation. Bills have been passed, the United uh, Uniform Anatomical Gift Act was written in 2007, which basically regulates where body parts go, who can donate, and the fact that they can't be sold. The National Organ Transplant Act addresses the shortage, and they put an article out in uh, 2008 in regards to their placement process and how it goes. The advantages of donation include the chance to give somebody a second life, creating a culture of love, and life, bringing awareness to the society by sharing. There are financial incentives. With tax deductions, you don't have to um, you get reduced burial costs, and you don't have to pay for organ donation. Um, some of the myths, fear of people saying you're dead when you're not, isn't gonna happen. You go through a barrage of tests, more so than non-organ donors, and death is confirmed. You also have, um, you have an open casket. In religion, all religious organizations virtually approve organ donation. As written in the Bible, no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. With, to recap the past seven minutes, I have covered the history of donation, types of donors, the advantages, and some of the myths. We've expanded the public's awareness and hopefully the involvement of even one person. For that one person can save 100 lives. Every life that is touched by organ and tissue donations crosses a bridge between life and death, hope and meaning, and love and healing. I have witnessed firsthand the sorrow of knowing that your loved one gave the gift of life to many people. I've seen the uncontrolled emotions of a pager going off signaling that someone has given the ultimate gift, that a donor was found, and has given you a new life. It's something that you are now informed of. It's something that I hope has sparked an interest, and that you will take this knowledge and the information that you gained today and share it in an educated discussion with others.